we can start from day one and get rolling. Where last year, we had to wait and we just lost any momentum going into the pre-season. Now we can start on the front foot. How many laps have you guys done? Done five. How, uh, Seven to go. 12 400s. 12 400s. Yeah. Two. Oh. One. Better than 3K. Always a nervous day, the first day, no matter how many pre-seasons you've done. Lucky enough for Robbo and I, we got a text message last night telling us to get down here a bit earlier and get a uh, 400 session out of the way before the boys did the three, 3KM. three So we got down there about quarter past seven, busted out our 12 400s and then we'll head back and start making the boys even more nervous by getting into them before they did the 3K. So, right. see he's back there. It's nice. nice. Fantastic to have everyone back, got all the group together, which is outstanding. To go through a trade period and land five very, very good players. So welcome, boys. Good to see you in our colours now. Your opportunity to influence our football club can start from today. Let's watch this, but watch it from our perspective. What are we trying to do as a football team? What are some of the messages out of it? Well, just some context on that as well. So that's uh, two minute 50 average per kilometre. That's, it's the equivalent of doing about an eight-minute 33 k uh, this morning and holding it, holding it for 42 k obviously. So it's quite extraordinary, but it was always considered a human wasn't going to be able to run under two hours for a, a marathon for 42 k So uh, it's a pretty impressive effort. What was some of the messages you got from that, mate? <laughs> couldn't do it by himself. No, he couldn't do it by himself. Exactly right. Took everyone to get him through. Everyone played their role. And the AFL season is a marathon. But his preparation got him to where he wanted to get to. So that's the AFL season. We've got a big road in front of us, a lot of hard work and a lot of opportunity for us. And we're going to grow here. We're going to do it all together. But culturally here, we're going to change. And we're going to keep pushing the limits in our skill, our connection, those things that we need to get right to help our co culture going forward. And today it all starts, all right? So we're gonna go out, do the three k some boys will go and do Sandy, lady will go through the training and what we have to do. But today is a day that we'll look back on and say, this is when our journey started together. Me as the coach, the group here, and then we'll say, shit, this is when we started to make huge inroads as a footy club. The last couple of weeks of holidays, you start to think about it and, and know you've got to come back in pretty good shape. A lot of the boys do a, a fair bit of work in the off season, so you, you come back in pretty good shape, but it's still nerve wracking coming in first day. A lot of the boys know um, each other's times and what you've got to get, so you normally pair up with someone or, or pick someone that's going to run uh, a little bit better than you and normally go with them. Yeah, mate. Get your face relaxed, big fella. 9.22. Dig in, prospect. Go. One yeah, yes. 9.26. Last lap. Whatever you got, big fella. Come on. Yeah, that's it. 10.4. 10.5. 10.6. Yeah, boys. Yeah, Johnny. Go, Jimmy. Yeah, Webby! To hear the numbers that came out of the run was outstanding across the board. You know, Gresh, where are you? Broke your, broke your best. Longy the same. You know, the bit that I loved was you took courage to go out and you tried to break the field. And, you know, you were hanging in there. Your ass was touching the ground, mate, and you broke 10 minutes. But that courage to go out by adults to try and lead the way and go is outstanding. So across the board, big tick, and now we can start getting into the footy stuff because yeah. we've got a healthy list and we're going the right way. So well done, boys. Fantastic. I suppose there's a little bit of uh, 
a little bit of nervousness, um, a lot of excitement. The boys that are going through the, you know, the recovery with injuries and rehab uh, are, are trending the right way. You're not going to nail everything, but you just think to yourself as you're driving in, I hope this is going the way we want and, um, you know, everything sort of goes to plan and we keep just moving forward. And I suppose today, after seeing the, the running results, I think that just puts us in a good space now to really move forward in the football program. So I sort of noticed when I got to the club and no, through no fault of the, anyone's at the club, so there's only been one premiership there in 145 plus years. So there's not, there's not premiership players and resources in the corridors like there is at other clubs. We're looking to change it, obviously. Some good people, David Raths. You know, Dave's got a history in skill acquisition, you know, coach development, and more recently at the AFL, you know, game analysis. He will oversee the football program, so that's working pretty closely with me on all the different elements, but it mainly be about the environment, um, the training program, how the coaches operate, um, the coach development. Yeah, he'll be, you know, the, the most senior guy in there working closely with Rats and, and myself. To get people like Slater, you know, Hanabry, Roughhead, Hill, uh, Dan Butler, that, that have all won premierships or been involved in premierships was, was a really important focus for me to, in the resourcing front. It's important because they know what's good enough and they they set different standards and they've, they've been around people and uh, connected groups that have got it done. So they're, they're hard to find, but, you know, Rats is in charge, so he, he'll bring a different methodology and they've worked hard in the off-season about some tweaks to the game plan. I think it'll probably be a different cultural feel to the group and a different emphasis on just connectedness, I reckon. We've been sort of half in, half out on some of how we've gone about that. So I think I think you probably picked up on yourself today. There's, there's a good vibe around. Uh, we want to capitalise on just the mojo of the group and how connected they are. And so be real focus on how that environment uh, embraces all the players. First and foremost, we look at fueling food um, and then building food. So fuel being your carbohydrates and then building being your proteins. Um, we've got the boosting foods being all their veggies. We try and encourage them to have at least three different colours on their plate from a vegetable perspective. And then you've got your healthy fats to try and you know, hold their joints and heal and repair. There are fussy eaters, but we work with them. Honey, how are you, mate? Hello. You want to get your skinnies done? Get the skinnies yeah, done. I'm just getting you. Luke's done at the moment. Yeah, that's fine. You can enter the data in for me if you want. If you, but if you don't want oh, to... He's pretty lean anyway. He doesn't look like <laughs> You don't need to cheat for me. <laughs> what? Yeah, I don't have to <laughs> take a couple of numbers off. Yeah, are still trying to get me to take numbers. I'm like, mate. <laughs> so we do a sum of seven skin folds, which means that we capture the data from seven sites on Luke's physique. And we add those seven sites up and that gives us our sum of seven skin folds. And we compare the results longitudinally over time um, to get an indication of how um, Luke's uh, physique is changing in relation to his training load. 2.4. This is what we've got to worry about, these two here. The money makers. A few bin tanks and Peronis in there. 6.0. 8.5. I'm sure you're struggling. This process has been great though. The boys have really learnt uh, around fueling for their training load and that's a key message that we run um, and educate the boys with. So over the off season they're training not to need to train as much, or they're not training as heavily so they don't need to consume as much fuel. And what's pleasing to see is that overall our results are fantastic coming back which means that they're listening to that message and they're inherently um, you know, putting that into practice. Yes, 3.2 and then abdominals for that, yeah. Uh, this off season I've been pretty pretty good. Um, coming into the club, they've sort of said, we don't want you to come in, like, stress them too much, just come in, 
get rolling and then um, we'll build you up and get you going in due, in due course. To see players develop, um, you know, trying to push the limits of their game, like, we're, we're here to really just facilitate, you know, we're like a TAFE really. You know, they come in, we try and facilitate for them to be the best they can be. And to see players try and test the boundary, whether it's running, in the weights, in the gym, um, with the footy, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Every area that they go to, how can they just squeeze a little bit more out of their, their career and, and develop something different? So, you know, I really challenge the players about how can they kick the footy? You know, how good's their non-dominant foot? Why is there limits that, oh, I can't kick that well on it? Well, if you don't practice, you can't improve. So the pre-season for us will be understanding yourself and how far you can go as a player and see if you can become the best you can be. There's a lot of young talent here and, you know, um, the group's so young and I think I'm probably one of the oldest blokes here and you know, I'm only 26, so you know, exciting times ahead and they just got to get better the more games they play, so excited to, you know, trying to help them and, and teach them as much as possible. Everyone's a big group and uh, sort of like a big family that you come to train every day and you're with each other every day and you become sort of like a, a group of brothers. So, um, yeah, just getting to know everyone and, um, you know, once I'm back in the training, just train hard and sort of just earn the respect from everyone. The facilities here are, are unreal and they're very new, so, um, and the deck out there looks pretty nice as well. So, excited to get out there and train and, yeah, we've got everything here and, yeah, which is good and in, in a good area as well. I think when you're a new player and you've just been drafted to the club and you're a kid, you know, I remember having a conversation with Matty Cruiser and, uh, you know, Chris Sharon and these players have, have just been drafted. It's like, yeah, it's like you've come from, you know, primary school and now you're into high school. You can accelerate through the classes quicker. There's no rules here. You might be in, say, year seven because it's your first year, but you can be in year 12 by the end of the year and playing really good football. There's no rules to this. It's what maybe the self-belief that they have, can they do it? But I just think we're going to just see how far they can go. The history here is, uh, you know, with Lockett and Harvey and you know, Trevor Barker and Danny Frawley, the great St Kilda people here. Um, yeah, it's great for us to be back, as you said, really, too. This is where our heartland is.